So it kind of opens your eyes, right? When you make that much money in such a short period of time, you think we have been slaving away. Yes. All these estate due transactions, yeah. the amount of hard work that goes into it might work, it might not work, it might fall through, you know? So many ifs, buts, maybes. And at that time, our goal was just cash. We just wanted cash. So we bought them, renovated them, turned some in from one bed to two beds, and then just sold them. We flipped them. Um, and that was, that was just our strategy at the time. It wouldn't be now. In hindsight, do you wish we kept some of them? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> hey, so as estate agents, you've been doing this a very long time, but you went through a massive realisation when you made £150,000 on selling a deal to one investor. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, um, we started off in 2012 was when we incorporated Affleton Estates. That was our uh, estate agency. Okay. Um, and, you know, we used to do all these normal deals where you'd get 1% to 2% on each property that you sell but we were mainly focused on the lettings and management side of things right but then came along this phone call um from a solicitor's firm offering us two sites to go and value okay. so we went down and we we had a look at the sites one was a dilapidated bungalow on a large plot of land um the other one was a four bedroom dilapidated house okay um these were all in and around the Croydon areas and we looked at each other we said Oh, okay, maybe, maybe this is one for ourselves. Maybe we might, you know, yeah. just jump onto this one. Looked at option A, B, C. First one was, you know, we we build it out. We go down the planning route, access, sound, all this stuff. Kind of threw us off straight away, not our cup of tea. Um, you know, it, it could have made a couple of hundred grand out of it. Yeah. Um, by the end, what was it? Two, three hundred. Mm. Then the the second option was we sell it on in the normal way. Then we thought, okay. We had a guy that was a seasoned investor. If you sold it on a normal way, that would have been, what, maybe three, four, five grand fees? Uh, yeah, we were charging. Yeah, about five and... Yeah, yeah. About Wouldn't have been grand. more than 10 grand, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not more than 10 grand, grand yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Your standard estate agent yeah. fee, yeah. Yeah. And the third option. Yeah, and round there, sorry to add, it's, it's, it's very competitive. Yeah. And there's so many, there's like, you know, 150 agents. Oh, in wow. It. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's like you have to be competitive with your yeah. fees. So you're looking at one to one and a half percent okay. um, that you could charge. And then the third option, which is what we went with, was reassign the contract onto one of our seasoned investors who'd right. bought through us a few times. He's a trustworthy person. Yes. We knew he was good for it. And this was his cup of tea. Yes. So that means you're committed to the purchase and say, right, we'll take this on. Uh, we meaning us, our investors, however we do it, we'll, we'll take this deal and we'll commit to it. Mm. And then effectively somebody else steps into your shoes and pays you quite a substantial amount of money for the privilege of being able to do that. Exactly that. Wow. Exactly that. So um, we agreed to the deal. Um, we'd said that, look, I, us or our consortium of investors are going to be buying this, mm -hmm. um, showed that commitment up front and then sp spoke to our buyer about it who okay. immediately fell in love. Right. He went to do a quick visit yeah. and you know the investors, yes. that they, they see it, they know it. Yeah, they know what they, they can do with it. They know correct. how much money they can make from that. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, he was willing to pay 75 grand in commission for each of those sites. Right. So 150 grand payday sort of and they had to do no work other than just structure deal. So what, what realisation did you get from that, from what you were doing previously and how this was different? So it kind of opens your eyes, right? When you make that much money in such a short period of time, you think we have been slaving away. Yes. All these estate due transactions, yeah. the amount of hard work that goes into it might work, it might not work, yes. it might fall through, you know? So many ifs, buts, maybes. And your standard sales process is three months, right? Mm. Yeah. Whereas this was not even half that. Yeah, yeah, great point. Yeah, no finance or nothing. No, probably a cash. Budget. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so what? What was the transition then to start focusing on? Which is what you do now is focus on investors um, in terms of selling deals, helping investors sell deals, and uh, creating a platform, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, kind of, how did that then uh, happen? How did the shift happen from actually let's just close the door on estate agency? This this looks much more lucrative. Um, so where we were with that was. When you, when you see that vision, mm. this is the potential that we have or the industry allows us to have. Yes. We didn't even know that this whole world, essentially we were deal sourcing, yes. deal packaging. That's yes. what we had done unknowingly. Um, you talk to people, you, you use your contacts that you've built over this 10 year period and you see that actually this is happening on a, on a daily basis yeah. and it can happen in scale. 
yeah. um, and size. So um, we started Site Finder. Well, we'd, we'd sold off our lettings and management side of the business, kept our Appleton Estates brand, rebranded to okay. Site Finder, which is now um, a deal sourcing and investors platform for us to help them yes. on both sides of grow their business. Yeah, so realise actually this is a whole different world. Mm. There's a, a massive opportunity here mm. and uh, created a, a platform where sources can go on and sell the deal so they can focus on the bits that they're good at and then uh, investors can come on and have uh, a look at deals that are on there that have been vetted uh, as well. That's it. And there's the key word, vetted. Yes. I think there's so many deals out there. I'm part of so many WhatsApp groups that get pinged every second yes. and it's just a deal that doesn't work one yes. way or another. It might seem like it works, but then the more you dig into it, it unfolds and it doesn't work. It doesn't yes. stack up. So I think that's what we're trying to, we, that's what our aim is to do here. Qualify yeah. the deals, make sure it's a proper deal so an investor can trust that when they go onto the platform, it is what it says it is. And so when people talk about a deal or sources say, I've got a deal, what does a deal mean uh, to you? Mm, that's a great question. Um, a deal is, I think it means different things to different people. Um, from whatever background that they've been in and what their vision is and what their aims are, mm -hmm. um, their goals. So I think it has to be something that provides a, a good ROI, Yes, which again is is very subjective. But I can see that the, the, the masses are looking at around about 20 to 30% ROI. Yes. Yeah, I think like you said though, it, it does depend on, on the situation because we, when we through the estate agency, as we were the first line to receive properties, we also got the choice to some, sometimes take those properties if we realised, you know, because we know the area so well, and we know if this is going to be 20% below market value, for whatever the reason is, and we did that, we took a couple of them. Yes. And at that time, our goal was just, ca we just wanted cash. So we bought them, renovated them, yeah. turned some in from one bed to two beds, and then just sold them. We yes. flipped them. Yeah. Um, and that was that was just our strategy at the time. It wouldn't be now. In hindsight, do you wish we kept some of them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. But, it, but that, at the time, it wasn't. It serves the purpose. Yeah, exactly. That cash would enable you to do other things. And, yes, uh, you exactly. probably wouldn't have been able to do what you then went on to do if exactly. that cash Correct. It's not available. And you're in your early so, 20s and you get yeah. excited over releasing big chunks of money yes. rolling onto the yeah. next. And I think, yeah. So yeah, that, that's what a deal was to us. Yeah. But then, yeah. And I think when I think about a deal, it's really an opportunity for somebody to make money. Yeah, how much that is or what that is, as you said, that's subjective. That depends on the individual, what they want and what their expectations are. And in the estate agency, what I, I tend to see is you find a lot of people are very good at selling uh, property, that are kind of especially in the corporate world, and that's what they do. They, they spend a lifetime selling property. And you get some, many, uh, maybe uh, like yourselves, which actually see, well, maybe we should do some property as well along the way rather than yeah. just sell it. The owners are always thinking that. Yeah, definitely. especially in the small independents. Yeah. I think I think that's much more yeah. common. They see the opportunities yeah. much more mm. than the bigger corporates do. Yeah. And I guess you you probably had, in the, when you were running estate agents, you probably had people coming all the time looking for deals. Yeah. And uh, so how, how would you decide who the deal goes to, as it were? <laughs> <laughs> so when a deal arrives, who is it that ends up with the deal? Because there's only one deal. There's 20 yeah. people maybe yeah. chasing you for a deal. Yeah. Well, you you could have sort of covered that. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you're if, if for us for me anyway, that person who came in with the paperwork yeah. and said, "Look, here's my money. Yeah. This is how much I've got in the bank," and then came back the week after and bought me lunch, yeah. or came back the week after and gave me a box of chocolates or something. The cheesy stuff worked yeah, yeah. Uh, because we're remembering them. Yes. Forefront really? of mind. Exactly. Yeah, They're yeah, always on my mind. Mind space. And I think that's so important. Absolutely. And often people, they do, they make one call and that's it. And then no, they can't. And it never works because you've got to think in the estate agency, that's all we're doing. We're on the phone. And if someone's ringing you every Friday morning, have, how are you doing? What have you got new this week? What have you listed? You can remember that person. Yeah. Absolutely. And they're nice and they're courteous and stuff. And you're going to be thinking, well, actually, you know, this yeah. one might be right for them. Yeah. yeah. I think that there was different types of investors and there was one guy that used to um send us an email every couple of weeks yeah here's my updated proof of funds yeah, here's my yeah, da -da -da -da. Yeah. everything's good to go yes i'm looking for stuff that you find below market value yes but you know what in an estate agency you know we're trying to get yes. our vendors you're working for the vendor because yeah, you're, the you're best getting price. paid by the seller correct yeah not the buyer correct yeah. so you know you're not really getting things that are below market value yeah. 
Yes. But if you do get the development sites and those things, actually, it wasn't the guy that was emailing us with proof of funds all the time. Mm. It was the guys that we knew were good for it. They've given yes. us their proof of funds, but actually they're in our office. Yes. They're coming to check up on us. They, we had our first baby and they bought us a little yeah. gift for the baby, you know? It's, yeah. Why not? Yeah, treat yeah. us. We're all up for it. Yeah. <laughs> it because it's relationships, isn't it? That's, that's what it is. It's yeah. a, it's, that's, it's that's what the game is. And I think many people miss that bit when yeah. they're looking for deals. Yeah. They they just, as you said, just turn up, here's my proof of funds. What have you got? What can you get me? Yeah. What numbers work? That doesn't work. What else can you show? Yeah. Versus who's going to take the time to nurture a relationship. Yeah. It's going to be much more effective. Yeah. And I know it works differently for different rankings in an estate agency business, but I mean, um, like we would go out and do valuations and then obviously we had our negotiators and things like that. But I mean, it's when you go out to a property viewing, you're going to be, if, if you're viewing something with say, let's say Foxton's, yeah. you're going to be put with a, a school leaver yes. who doesn't know anything about the property. Right. Okay. They just send out a junior. And, yeah, yeah. 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 Go and open yeah. the door. Yeah. You know, um, yes. and I think that, you know, that's why we got into properties. We come from an architectural background, both right. of us. Right. And um, we both like like dealing with people and we both love property. Yes. So that was kind of the natural progression. Yes. But if you don't have that passion, yeah. you know, and you're not, you, you need to understand that dealing with different yeah. people means dealing with different personalities and nurturing relationships. And you expect that from others and you want it back as well. Yes. And we were talking about earlier off camera, um, the, the number of people involved in a transaction. And typically when properties uh, are sold subject to contract, that sole sign goes on, probably about a third of them fail. They never reach yeah. completion. They either yeah. come back or eventually they're taken off market, whatever it is, they never sell. Um, <coughs> Purple bricks. I'm doing... <laughs> 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 probably probably that. <laughs> and what, uh, what we find is because few people invest in the relationship as i said there's so many people involved in a single transaction and i guess that leads me on to like the platform you've created site finder some of it's about to try and manage all that processes exactly. tell, tell me a bit more about uh, how that works yeah so it's really is the complete opposite way of the way a traditional estate agency works because um you know when we had to onboard a vendor it, it was the we had to get information and extract it from the vendor and and that's fine. That's our job. That's what we have to do. But this way, we've created a platform where the vendor can, or the deal sourcer in this case, can yeah. upload the deal yeah. to the platform. And in, in a very nice systemized way, we know the questions we have to have answered. So we can answer the key questions that you need. Yes. Exactly. So then we can go and actually qualify these deals properly. Um, and there's, there's different types of questions, obviously, with the two different industries, the same industry, but different yeah. scale of the industry. Um, and at the same time, once once we've qualified those deals, we can then push that back to the platform and the investors can see it straight away, Yeah, which is a lot quicker than us having to then call every investor, which we do anyway, yes. and text on WhatsApp because yes. the way technology has changed. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it is a big thing about using technology because when we were doing this, so seven or eight years ago, I was trying to get our vendors to sign e-sign documents yes. and they just couldn't understand. Yeah. They were like, I don't believe this is going to stand up yeah. in court. Yeah. I don't want to do this. And, yes. you know, and there's me trying to push this. Too early. People too early. Yeah, exactly. Of too early. Around it, yeah. Um, but now it's standard. Yes. So now, you know, we, these deals are moving fast. Yeah. yeah, we're having offers sometimes 48 hours, a few days, a week. And technology is there to be able to do this. 100%. Uh, and as you said, you know, with a good deal, it doesn't hang around. It moves very quickly. Yeah. And I guess what you're trying to do is make the source's life very easy. So if they're finding good deals, they're uploading a deal with the relevant information. Yeah. And you're then vetting that deal to make sure, okay, sense check it. Does it make sense? Does it stack up? Uh, and then when it goes live on the platform, investors can then decide if they want. Uh, so what's the process there when an investor uh, looks at that deal? Yeah, so I think that's literally the key thing here is that when an investor looks at the deal on the platform, they know that it's a trusted, pre-qualified, vetted deal. Um, they can they've already opted when they sign up to their areas that they want to get these deals in. Yes. So it's not just being bombarded. Yeah. Because I think that's the other thing. It is frustrating to have your email or WhatsApp be yes. bombarded with all these irrelevant deals. And I think that's another thing that we noticed from experience. Um, so the idea here is to bring in a systematic approach for a deal sourcer or an investor, systemize the things that they find difficult in their property businesses. Yes. Um, and take the tedious stuff away or the important tedious yeah. stuff away yeah. so that they can focus on either 
deciding what deals they want to buy from an investor's point of view yeah. or finding great deals from a deal sourcer's point of view. Because that's their personality. You know, why does someone want to go into deal sourcing and deal packaging? They they love talking to people. They love yes. property. They like negotiating. They're good at that. Do they want to do compliance? Yeah. I don't think so. Do they want to handle solicitors yeah. arguing back and forth about, no, that person's rubbish. They, yes. they missed my email. No, they don't want to handle that. They don't foresee that that is where the property could then fall out yes. of bed. Yeah. So that's where, we, where we'd like to help. Yeah, and I can relate to that 100%. When I started, I was very good at sitting down with people, agreeing, okay, let's get this solved, let's get agreed, let's sign here, deal's done, right, off to the next one. Yeah. And actually, there's a whole host of other things oh, that need yeah. to happen before you actually That's get paid. That's a quarter, uh, if not less than a quarter of the journey. Yeah. yeah. So things like uh, the um, finance brokers, uh, the solicitors, the conveyance process, is that some of that managed via the platform? Yeah, we have the team. Um, it's not directly in the platform, but we have the team that we will refer yeah. Um, because we know that they can do the job and some of these deals are not, well, they're not standard deals, right? You're not buying a normal property in most cases. Often if there's a, if a property is cheap, either the seller is, uh, you know, distressed uh, a little bit or under some... Uh, Motivated uh, in yeah. some way. Yeah. yeah, there's some pain there that they want to resolve or there's an issue with the property itself sometimes as well. And like I said, they're not always straightforward, but many of these things can be fixed. Yes, so, absolutely. Okay. And how do you see the, the site evolving? What's your vision for, for Site Finder? Um, it's to be a platform, uh, yeah. to, to like, like you briefly touched on, to have our trusted solicitors and brokers and it just a one stop shop yes. where you, as a, as a deal sourcer, you just find your deals, put them on, and they're sold. So, yeah, as an investor, you can find really good deals um, and really to just become the leader of, of that because I don't think there is anyone out there doing it to the extent that we can do it because we've had the experience of doing that hard grind estate agency work. Yeah. You just, that's just something you have to do to understand yeah. the process of selling a property is just, it's, it's long and trying to deal with those solicitors, which is when most of the deals fall out. Yes. Getting the deal under offer is easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting it through to completion is not, yes. it's not easy. I, I think the line. For, for deal sources though, that the key here is we want to within, you know, six months to a year max, be able to give a good deal sourcer, an offer within 40 hours, Yeah, you know, because that is where it's a struggle. Yes. You know, you, at the moment, what are they relying on? Networking, or let me take you for a coffee. Yes. You know, it's time consuming. And yeah, it's, it's fun. You know, you build relationships along the way. You never know when that might come in handy, mm. but it doesn't move things quicker. Yeah, yeah. as you said, so, most sources want to focus on finding good yeah. deals, negotiating and moving on. That's it. But when you, they have to start looking for the investors, networking at events. Clients. Facebook groups or whatever it might be, then dealing with the compliance and everything else, it starts becoming a bit of a grind and that's mm. not what they want to do. So is there a fee that the sourcer has to pay to go on board on the platform or the, the investors have to pay any fees? No. So it's free to register. Yeah. Um, you, you, if you're an investor, you pop your criteria on there, it takes a couple of seconds, you immediately have access to live deals. Yes. Um, and if it's, if it's not something there that you don't want at the moment, you'll be notified when something hits your area. If you're a deal sourcer, it's free to register as well. Um, and once you've got property, you just pop, you fill out the property form, which asks for some um, details on the property. Yeah. So both the sources, they don't have to pay to register uh, and the investors don't have to pay to register either. Um, and in an estate agency world, we were talking about earlier on, is the the seller of the property that pays the fees uh, for uh, a, a broker, if you like. Uh, in this case, um, as sources, what we find is the buyer pays the fees. Uh, so I guess that's the same um, here as well. The buyer pays uh, yeah, uh, the fee. Yeah, because we, we've given them a platform where they can get exclusive off-market deals, um, pre-qualified as well. So, you know, they pay a fee on completion, yes. which is split with the deal sourcer. Yeah. So, so that's how you effectively monetize uh, as well, because you share a fee with your Correct. sourcer and you're taking a lot of headache away for the sourcer. Yeah. What sort of challenges do you think uh, sourcers um, are faced when they're all the kind of things you see sources doing well or not so well yeah i think the first the first, the big one is compliance yeah. a lot of the sources we talk to are not compliant yeah. which is scary <laughs> yeah, i'm smiling because uh, uh uh yes i have that conversation frequently with people in yeah. compliance compliance com, com, what <laughs> yeah, yeah, <what> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, and, and rightly so because like you know what like rush was saying you don't want to get into compliance you want to be a deal sourcer yes which is the fun bit compliance is unbelievably boring the amount of stuff you have to do and but that's one thing um and actually really get because i think people think they can just look and right move and then 
and, and Zupla and just mix around the figures. Oh, you can put a bedroom there. Then suddenly it's a deal and it's just not a deal. Yeah. And if they're not educated, like yeah. if they haven't been on any courses, they don't understand the process of how to find good deals. I, it's, this is where we're seeing the sort of quality, the range of quality deal sources. Yeah. yeah. So I think that the biggest challenge as well is, well, it's everything from after finding the deal. They might be, you know, they might have gone on courses or some haven't and they think yes. they know what they're doing. But anyway, that's a different topic. Um, once they've, let's let's assume that they've secured, because that's essential yes. as well. They have to yes. secure the deal. Mm -hmm. You can't just yeah. say, because I found this on right move, here's a link. Yeah, correct, <laughs> correct. Because I got approached by some guys. Oh, Rush, you know, can we come and upload this to SiteFinder? Uh, we've got a machine that can pull in all these things from right move yeah. and Zoopla and we can filter it by this and this and this. Okay, great. Where's your authority to sell the property? Yes. So, you know, we're working on providing that contract as well. But, you know, you have to have some sort of authority from the seller that, yeah. yes, you can sell my property. Yeah. It doesn't have to be exclusive. Brilliant if it is. That's perfect. But yeah, that needs yeah, so to be Yeah, so rather than it just being random links, this is where the sellers agreed, yeah. okay, yeah. that's fine. I'll have to work with you to get yeah. this done. I said if they're good deals, what you're doing, pro providing the facility and facilitating that to be done really quickly yes. and smoothly. That's Absolutely. it. Um, so once that deal is found, in a nutshell, then it's finding the investor, which we, like I said, hope mm -hmm. to do soon in 48 to 72 hours. Um, and then moving on to compliance, getting all the paperwork done, bringing in solicitors, brokers, lenders, yes. whether it be bridging or whatever it is, however they want to finance it. We we all know the deal, so we know what kind of structure we're looking for. Yes. So we can essentially give them the packet and say, look, if you want to go down this type of financing, we've got this person. Yes. This is what the finances will look like. So that's the level of detail. And the type of uh, properties that you'll be listing uh, currently or maybe in the future as well, uh, vanilla buy to lets uh, or other types uh, as well are you thinking everything okay so everything that makes a good deal yes. which it means it just needs to the numbers need to stack there needs yeah. to be a good something lucrative some good yeah. returns then on the back uh, somebody of it. needs to be able to create profit from yeah. that ultimately yeah. Yeah, reasonable profit that's why yeah. they're paying a fee to buy in the first place correct yeah okay so once they have secured the deal and they bring it to the platform from there it's everything from there onwards it could fall out of bed yes. and that's where we would like to step in help the deal sourcer to not just carry that deal on smoothly but allow them to scale their business yes and i think that's where i've met some really brilliant deal sources along the way as well and i i know the ones that are knowledgeable yes. taking time to invest in themselves um and they really bring value i've learned some things from them as well so when they um bring the deal in the challenges they're facing are that they are not feeling like they can offload things. Okay. They maybe don't trust anyone else yes. to do it as well as themselves yeah. or, you know, um, and that is stopping them from scaling. Yes. So they need a trustworthy platform yeah. to help them grow and scale and take on more deals. Yeah. To you're do really a partner for them yeah. in the process yeah. and say, we you do the bit sources. that you're good at yeah. and we'll take care of the, uh, the yeah. other bit. And, yeah. and it's often the bit that people don't necessarily want to do. And when it comes to sourcing, lots of people, um, you know, you bump into, say, we're sourcing, we're sourcers mm. uh, and stuff. And a question I generally like to ask, so tell me about your last three deals that you've done. Mm. And for most people, they've disappeared. In oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I, 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 I'm kind of joking a, a little bit. But uh, I guess the, the point I'm making is uh, if deal sourcing sometimes has a bad rep. Mm. People think it's an easy place to start. And it is a good place to start, but sourcing is not easy. It's a mm. skill. It's a skill that you need to develop. And some of it's in the marketing and the lead generation of finding the opportunities in the first place, finding somebody that might be motivated and keen to sell. And then it's understanding how you can negotiate and turn that into what might potentially be a deal that somebody will pay you for. And I think there's a lot in there that many people struggle with mm. and don't do so well. And there's some brilliant educators and people teach that really well. And there's some Let's say not so good ones as well out there. Uh, Does everyone well. think they're an educator nowadays? Yeah. Um, after one deal, let's start a course. Yeah. I'll show you how to yeah. do it. Um, so, uh, you know, you find a mixture of people. What's your experience of that? Because you mentioned you've got some really good ones. I guess you probably find some that are a less experienced uh, oh, yeah. as well that you have to there's, guide. Yeah, there's more of those okay. out there. But um, I think that the, the deal sources that we would like to partner with are ones that have invested in themselves first they know yes. how to get a good deal and absolutely we'll look at we'll look at all kind of deals because we have our deal analyst team yes. that will qualify these deals in place 
Um, but yeah, if they've got the confidence, they know they've educated themselves in how to secure a deal, negotiate with the vendor, build those relationships, upload the deal, yeah. leave the rest to us to carry it through to the end. The reason why we're also doing that 50-50 partnership is exactly why you said we see them as a partner. Yes. Um, you know, we understand that we'd be taking on their headache part and the heavier chunk of the process, yes. but it's still a 50-50 um, when it comes to the commission because, you know, we're helping them to grow and scale their yeah. business. So it needs to be lucrative as well for them. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's so important. We will be working together. So our yeah. current students and future students mm. going through our deal finding intensive programs yeah. will be working with you to, to move those deals on uh, as well because I want them to focus on the bit mm. which well, I believe is a real skill in terms of the finding, the negotiating, securing part. And let somebody else take care of the rest. Uh, Absolutely. Rest of and I think that's why it's brilliant to be connecting with yourself and uh, um, other property mentors that we'll be connecting with soon yes. as well. Um, because, you know, you can handle all that first bit and together we'll kind of follow, help deal source and yeah. investors to go from A to Z all the way through, supporting them. Yeah, because the every, everybody procedure. benefits. Everybody Everyone benefits. benefits yeah. Yeah. And from an investor's point of view, and I guess for many investors, when I'm speaking to them, what is it you're looking for? And often uh, I find that either it's a yield they're looking for, they want it to be a certain yield uh, in terms of the parking, the cash, and it's to generate a certain amount of money, or they're looking for a certain percentage below market value. Mm -hmm. They tend to be the two things I find a lot of investors look for. What's your experience on that, what, what investors are asking you for? Yeah, so exactly the same. I think if it's um, an investment they're looking for up north, um, well, I say up north because we're down yes. in the south. <laughs> so everything was north. Everything, everything is north, yeah. yeah. Um, then I think people are looking for long-term investments. They want a good return in terms of yield. So I think anything over 10% yes. is 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 a good place to yeah. start. And that's where we kind of have our benchmark with SiteFinder as well for deal sources. So they know what defines a good deal. Yes. Um, so our deal analyst team are told that, you know, if it's around the 10% or higher, brilliant. Um, if it's a kind of buy-to-let kind of deal that we're yeah. uploading, because there's different types of deals. You've got yeah. your BRRs, your buy-to-lets, your flips, um, you know, your development sites, yeah. your R2SAs. So there's different types of things where they'll look for different sorts. So in a flip, obviously, it's all about the profit, yeah. um, what you get out of it at the end. So I think in terms of BMV, 20%, uh, I know uh, there's a lot of criticism around this as well, because is it a true BMV? Yeah. Um, you know, what defines, there's different ways of calculating that below yes. market value. Is it off the GDV or, you know, taking into consideration refurbishment costs and everything? But I mean, you've got to you've got to base it off something. Yes. Um, so it's really just what is its market value today? Yeah. And what are you getting it for? Yeah. I think that's probably the best numbers to work with. Yeah. What's it worth as it is today? As it Not is. Not once it's all finished, once it's looking yeah. Good, yeah. as it is today, yeah. what is it possibly worth? Yeah. Yeah. And based off that, what can we get off that price? Correct. Then and you've then got that's, your stamp that's a bit and market value, all of yeah. this on top, but that's going to come anyway. Yeah. So what is its yeah, core value and yeah. is, is it discounted off that price? So what we're offering is kind of that pre-negotiation. Yes. That's, that's what we want to put on. And I guess you'll also probably have some people that want to invest and they're not necessarily, they don't want to go up north past Watford. I haven't, I haven't, uh, they, they're, they're looking for the longer term, maybe capital growth. Like, mm. for example, down in the southeast, you're, probably, you're not going to get fantastic yields, yeah. but you're probably going to get very good capital growth over time. Mm. So you get some investors looking for, for that as well. So not everybody necessarily chasing double digit yields. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're a lot easier yes. to, to get yeah. hold of. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the team, uh, tell me a little bit more about the team. So you're the founders uh, of the uh, business and uh, business partners and also a husband and wife uh, team as well, which is great to, yeah. great to see. Yeah. And uh, other people that help and involve in the business and supporting and making it grow. So we, we've always been in business together since I can remember, since we graduated from university, even though it was just a coincidence that yeah. we'd both done architecture, but it just made sense and we've never looked back since and... You know, we've learned what each other's goals and strengths are and what, you know, luckily we both have opposite strengths. Yes. So, you know, for us, a husband-wife partnership works really well. So we've always done that together. And now we've also teamed up with our good friends and our mentor, Hanif Khan yes. and um, Khalid. Yes. Mohamed Khalid as well, which are also co-founders of SiteFinder too. Very experienced investors. Yeah. Very experienced investors. And also, uh, when I first got involved in property, Hanif then was running a machine that was churning out 30, 50 deals a month. Yeah. So this is not a completely new invention. They've kind of taken some of, they're already very, very good at done 
before and kind of, okay, let's now add more tech to it. Yes. Make it much more smoother, much more efficient. So I think uh, it's going to absolutely fly and it's going to, there's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an amazing business without a shadow of a doubt. Thank and, you. Um, I, I, de- I definitely see the advantage there for sources, being able to just get rid of the headache and also for the investors as well, looking for deals. Uh, as you said, many people are in WhatsApp groups. You get stuff, you look at it and it's, there's not a deal. Where's, where's the deal there? Uh, and I remember when I, when I started as well, one of the early days, um, when I started finding deals and you'd send things around, what you'd find, you'd send it out to people, um, WhatsApp, uh, well, it wasn't so much WhatsApp then, just text messages and mm. stuff. And you'd find a message come back a few days later that this property developed. You think, there's another one I just sent out. <laughs> there's another three, four thousand pound of fees being added on <laughs> and come back to you. Gone around you the buy this area. What are you that interested in this? Uh, this is our deal we sent out. <laughs> and you know yeah. what? We were guilty of that back in the stage yes. days. You get offered something from a um, from somebody and you think, oh, okay, well, yeah. uh, you know, an off market development site. Because you, when you're in a stage and you've got so much, yes. you know, that you're dealing with your vendors and stuff, yeah. you get this development site and you think, oh, okay. Let me pass it on to my guys. And yes. oh, this one's been around the block, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's off market, yeah. But yeah. It doesn't mean it hasn't been around the block. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And so one of the things we're doing right now within our deal finding intensive course is where we're focusing on uh, teaching students to to market for opportunities, find where somebody might be motivated, where they might be keen to sell, look for that clue, that I'd, and then uh, start a conversation with them. We negotiate a deal, turn it into an opportunity, and then we just want to pass it over to SiteFinder. That's really the way we want to build our training so we can focus on where I said, where I think the most skill is required. And I'm sure other educators will massively benefit from plugging into their platform and doing similar things as well. So it can focus on the, the training bit rather than the, the boring administrative bit, as it were. And exactly that. that That's why we love to team up with educators like yourself. They've they've We know that they're serious because they've spent a good amount of money coming to educators like yourself and um you know uh who else we've got, we've got andrew and um property filter and um some other people that we know have invested so you know they're a serious person they've they've come out on the the other side feeling confident and yes. knowing how to get these deals yes um so once they they've got that we are then reassured that that's going to be the likelihood yeah. of a good quality deal is going to be higher. It's much more efficient for you because it yeah. means you're not being bought d- deals all the time. Correct. You're not politely saying, people, well, actually, you know, this one doesn't really work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we rather than saying no, we do go back and say, okay, well, look, this is what our analyst has come back with. We've also run our eyes over it as well and maybe go back and see if you can negotiate this yeah. price yes. um, with the vendor. So, you know, but I mean, the more good quality and the more times we can say yes, we're actually helping everyone out so much more. And if you're looking for a good course on negotiating, make sure you look us up. So what we'll do, we'll make sure we put the links in the description as well for people to access the platform and also on the screen uh, uh, as well. And uh, what we've uh, uh, agreed as a special arrangement, which I'm really excited about, is if you're looking to buy deals, that if they register through these links, what will happen is they get access to deals four hours before uh, it will go out to the main investor database. So make sure you use the links in the description because that means you'll get access to deals four hours for everybody else. All right. Yeah, I'm really excited about that as well for our investors. Yeah, we are too. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for having us, sir. Thank you. Thank you.